Hey everyone, uh, Church of SDFU. So, uh, I just watched one of Aaron K. 1994's videos, um, in which he discusses, uh, basically a retort to Carl Sagan's, uh, what is it, like, uh, uh, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and he says that doesn't apply to history, and it's basically he's defending, um, that old, um, apologetics favorite of how the Bible is historical evidence not only of Jesus but of his supernatural powers and I've been in a comment back and forth with him in the comments and I don't think we're going to find common ground um, so this video isn't so much about <laughs> about getting a response um, it's more just for me to put my own opinion out there because I want to um, and have it on record on my channel. Um, also, this is in no way uh, intended to be insulting or anything to Aaron uh, K's 1994's channel. He's a nice guy and everything. Um, obviously a theist, but it's a good channel. It's interesting. Check it out. Subscribe. Um, but we obviously disagree on this point. And um, I have to say, you know, I describe myself as an apatheist. I don't really care about religion, um, except when it kind of strays into territory that I think is a bit too silly to let pass. And that's because that territory, for whatever reason, is too important to me. And I think this idea that we actually should allow um, historical evidence to support claims that cannot be supported by hard science, that fall outside hard science, I find that very problematic. Um, so in my uh, back and forth with Aaron Kay, his argument was basically, since the supernatural isn't in the domain of the natural, um, hard science doesn't have anything one way or the other to say about supernatural claims, therefore the historical evidence is good enough by itself and we should just believe it. Um, in fact, uh, this is, you know, <laughs> I find this a very, very poor argument. Um, if you look at it, of course we're debunking supernatural claims every day. Um, that's what the amazing Randy has made a career out of, debunking supernatural claims, debunking uh, people with who claim to have mind-reading abilities or telekinesis or healing abilities or what's that where you can see you know, that distant, where they can see a different place, all of these things. He's had many people try out for his million dollars, and they've all failed. No, science cannot explain why something supernatural is happening, but yes, science can definitely identify whether something may be supernatural. And that's by examining it, and then seeing whether there exists a natural explanation, or whether there at least exists a solid theory or hypothesis for what might be going on. And if there's not, then that's a very good candidate for something supernatural. For example, Jesus healed people, supernaturally, supposedly. Now, we have many miracle healers today who supernaturally heal people. When we take these people and their victims who are supposed to have been healed, we always find that things aren't as they were supposed to be. Um, people either end up not being healed, or they end up not really having been that sick in the first place. And we end up seeing a lot of psychology involved in why the people actually themselves think they've been healed in many of those cases. And in other cases, at least the people that observe those people think they've been healed. Maybe that person goes back home and feels bad again because it was only a temporary high, but the people that saw this incident thought, oh my god, that person's been healed. Look, they've been paralyzed and they were walking. They weren't paralyzed and they're not walking now. Um, obviously, there exist all kind of other tricks for achieving all kinds of other effects. And all kinds of crazy things have happened in history, right? And this is things that are today. So because we have modern techniques, um, if we have someone like that, we can ask them to go to Randy and he can debunk them. 2,000 years ago, we didn't have any of these things. 2,000 years ago, 
any of these miracle healers who are a dime a dozen today when we can debunk them could have gone around performing these kinds of miracles. Um, and there is absolutely nothing to suggest that miracle healers 2,000 years ago are of any different ilk than the ones we have today. And if you suggest that um, that today no one takes them seriously, well, most people don't because, yes, we've scientifically debunked too many of them. But tens of thousands of people still do. And as you especially see, the less technologically advanced the society, the more people are convinced by these miracle healers. And people in the US, which is very advanced, still thousands are convinced. And they give millions and millions of dollars to these miracle healers to perform healing on them. And if you had one of these miracle healers with his following of thousands, and then some of them wrote a book about it, and we had this book in 2,000 years. And for some reason, people started taking it very seriously. Would that be historical evidence that this miracle healer actually performed supernatural miracles? I would argue it would in no way be such evidence. And given the fact that there are many of these miracle healers, there's, I mean, nowadays it's difficult because of this science. But if we couldn't debunk them in any ultimate way, then there would be a good chance that one of them would actually build up a following that would do something to memorialize him and possibly build up some kind of a faith. And voila, we have a religion. Um, this idea that you can use historical evidence to contradict what we understand about the universe um, I think is very, very fallacious. It, it wouldn't matter to me how many people we have um, talking about, talking about, I don't know, witchcraft. It still didn't happen. We have people that talked about werewolves. We have people that talked about vampires. All of these things don't exist. Um, there's an interesting case of the doghead people. There are people that supposedly always lived somewhere else, but people had seen them. There were eyewitnesses that had met these doghead people, or at least they knew someone that had met them. Um, and all of this comes, and it's people from Europe, even people from Asia. They all believe these doghead people existed. We don't have any evidence that they did. We don't find any doghead bones. So we can assume that rather than thinking there's some supernatural being that existed, that they just never existed. Um, UFOs. There have been UFO sightings for 200 years now. There have been probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that have seen UFOs. There's a variety of explanations. Some of them may have been natural phenomena, but some of these people actually think they were abducted by a UFO and then taken into the spaceship and had contact with aliens. And because these stories get out, these people probably unknowingly match their stories. These details actually started uh, being the same in the stories because they had heard the stories and so they subconsciously made them fit with each other. So now we have all this alien testimony. Does that mean aliens exist? Does that mean maybe they're a supernatural entity? No, it doesn't. It just means that there are certain psychological effects that combine with certain, um, sometimes things that actually just occur in nature that are strange and very often just various types of fraud and or placebo effect and it doesn't necessarily need to be fraud that person may think that they're helping because they pray and the other person feels better maybe they seem to feel a lot better it's the placebo effect and then everyone goes home happy that person may not have been helped forever but they may feel better for a while and everyone around them is very convinced about it um, and so this historical evidence argument, I mean, all you really need to do is have a single person that has any such ability that we can verify today doesn't fit within the realms of science. So science cannot explain, cannot show how supernatural powers work. But science can show, if you show me something, it can show whether this is a candidate for supernatural power or not. And with whatever science is approached today and analyzed, we've come away 
saying, no, this wasn't actually supernatural. There's a natural explanation. The same we could do with Jesus if we were, he were walking around today. The same we could do if there were a saint, for example, that had these powers. We could verify or not verify. Crying statues, Jesus' face and toast, all of these things, we can look and we can say on the balance of things, is there probably a natural explanation or not? And in every case, the scientific community as a whole has not been convinced that it's true. So just because people that were a lot more gullible and a lot more easily convinced 2,000 years ago when we didn't have science, that you managed to get a bunch of them convinced about it and managed to get them so convinced that they wrote some books about it, doesn't mean it's true. I'm sorry it doesn't. And it doesn't mean that Christianity is definitely false. It doesn't mean that the stuff in the Bible isn't exactly true. Maybe Jesus did heal people, maybe he did get resurrected. But I really, really strongly disagree that you can take this historical writing as actual evidence for that. You'll have to come up with something better than that if you want to convince someone who is not already a believing Christian. That's just my opinion on it. I'll see you guys all later.